good morning everyone and welcome back to the cd crash course so today we are going to study the chapter for you of which is oscillation so what is basically oscillation so oscillation is nothing but to and fro motion of any object about a mean position so we can take the simple example of a spring mass system so here we can see when spring is connected to the mass m initially mass m is at rest point and if you displace the mass from the mean position to the extreme position by the displacement x so this mass will oscillate between these two extreme position so this motion of the mass about the mean equilibrium point which is x is equal to 0 okay this is called as a oscillation so oscillatory motion it is sometimes referred as a harmonic motion so what is harmonic motion if the oscillatory motion follows the sine or cosine function sine or cosine function then this oscillatory motion we can represent or describe as a harmonic motion okay so for the harmonic motion we can have the equation for displacement which is x is equal to a sine omega t or x is equal to a cos omega t okay so here this sine omega t function which is a trigonometric function or cos omega t function it will describe how the displacement is changing with respect to time okay so this is called as a harmonic motion next we have the periodic motion so periodic motion means the motion which repeats itself after equal interval of time that is called as a periodic motion so motion which repeats itself after equal interval of time so such motion is called as a periodic motion so we can represent graphically like this so here y axis we can take this as a displacement and the x axis it is the time axis okay so periodic motion we can describe as a sine function or a cosine function so this is the periodic motion okay so oscillation of a spring mass it is a periodic motion so this is the mean equilibrium point which is x is equal to zero this is the bottom most point and this is the top most point so these are the extreme points so we can consider this as a x or plus x and this can be minus x so this motion we can describe like this so this mass m is oscillating between two extreme points this is the minus x and this is the plus x okay so this is the periodic motion so oscillation means it is the to and fro motion of an object about a point harmonic motion means if the oscillatory motion follows the sine or cosine function then we can say it is the harmonic motion 
periodic motion means motion which repeats itself after equal interval of time okay so you can see the particle or the object is passing through the same point again and again so after fixed interval of time so after this interval so this interval is nothing but the time period so this time period will remain same in the periodic motion okay now what is simple harmonic motion so it is represented as a shm so simple harmonic motion means it is a periodic motion with constant amplitude or the second definition is it is the periodic motion in which force or acceleration is always directed towards the mean position and proportional to the displacement so force or acceleration always directed towards mean position and it is proportional to the displacement so this is called as a simple harmonic motion okay so in case of simple harmonic motion the amplitude remains same with respect to time okay so again we can take the example of spring mass system so initially mass is at equilibrium point and suppose we displace the mass on the right side so here mass is moving on the right side so its a displacement is x okay and the force that will try to bring the mass in the equilibrium point okay so this is called as a restoring force so here restoring force is nothing but the spring force so which is f is equal to ax okay so we can write f this force is equal to minus kx because the force acting in the opposite direction to the displacement so we can take f is equal to minus kx and as per newton's second law we can write f is equal to mass into acceleration so this is equal to minus kx okay and from this we get the acceleration is equal to minus k by m into x okay so here acceleration is proportional to the displacement so acceleration is directly proportional with the displacement or the force causing the oscillation or force which bring the mass to the equilibrium point this force is also proportional to the displacement okay so this is called as a simple harmonic motion now this equation is for acceleration and it is negative means acceleration or the force they are always directed towards the mean position in the simple harmonic motion okay now here k by m this value we can write this as omega square okay or omega is equal to square root k upon m this is called as a frequency of oscillation and this frequency it is represented as a radian per second so unit for this square root k by m is the rad per second okay so we can write acceleration is equal to minus omega square x so this is the formula for acceleration in the simple harmonic motion so you note down this simultaneously now let us see what is the differential equation 
of simple harmonic motion so we know minus kx this is equal to mass into acceleration now the differential equation for velocity is dx by dt and acceleration is dv by dt so v we can put d by dt of dx by dt so this becomes d2x upon dt square so this is the acceleration okay now we can just rearrange this equation so mass into acceleration plus kx is equal to 0 okay so mass into acceleration is d2x upon dt square plus k into x equal to 0 now just divide complete equation by the mass so d2x upon dt square plus k by m into x is equal to 0 okay now this k by m is nothing but the omega square which is the angular frequency so d2x upon dt square plus omega square x is equal to 0 so this is the differential form for the simple harmonic motion so this term is acceleration omega is the frequency and x is the displacement okay now let us see the equations for displacement velocity and the acceleration Now in simple harmonic motion, the displacement is represented as A sin omega t plus phi. If I differentiate this equation, which is a dx by dt, we will get the velocity. And this velocity is A omega cos omega t plus phi. And again, if I differentiate velocity, so it is a dv by dt. So we will get the acceleration. So acceleration becomes minus a omega square sine omega t plus phi. Okay. So these are the equation. This is for the displacement. This is for velocity. And this is for the acceleration. Okay. Now just we will write the simplified version of these equations. So velocity at any position x. So this equation is v is equal to plus or minus omega in the square root a square minus x square okay so by using this equation we can determine the velocity of a particle at any point x with respect to the mean equilibrium point so take the example of spring mass system so this is the equilibrium point which is x is equal to zero This is the maximum position. So this value on positive or negative side, let us take this minus a. And this displacement, which is the maximum displacement on the positive side is a plus a. Okay. So plus a or minus a, this is called as the amplitude. 
So this is the amplitude of the oscillation. So meaning of amplitude is it is the maximum displacement with respect to the mean point. So between these two position, if the particle or the mass is at the point x, okay. So x can be a by two, a by three, a by four, okay. So at the point x, if you want to find out what is the displacement, then by using this formula, we can determine the velocity. So v is equal to plus or minus omega in the square root a square minus x square. Okay. Now displacement equation is x is equal to a sin omega t plus phi. So from this equation, if I take phi is equal to zero, okay. So equation becomes a sin omega t. So maximum value of the displacement x max this is equal to. So this can be plus or minus a. Okay, and this equation will have the waveform like this. So it is the sinusoidal wave. And this maximum value is a plus a. And maximum value on the negative side is a minus a. Okay. So particle will oscillate between these two points plus a and minus a. So maximum displacement is plus or minus a. Okay. Similarly, acceleration. We have the equation a is equal to minus omega square. So this is a, a omega square sine omega t plus phi. Okay. So from this a max, that is the maximum value of acceleration, this is minus a omega square. So this is the maximum value of the acceleration and velocity maximum. We have the equation V is equal to a omega cos omega t plus phi. Okay. So this is equal to V plus or minus a omega. So this is the maximum value of the velocity. So if I plot the velocity waveform, So velocity is leading the displacement by pi by two because its function is cos omega t plus phi and displacement is sine omega t plus phi. So this is the velocity V is equal to a omega cos omega t plus phi and acceleration is leading the velocity by the phase angle pi by two. So acceleration. So when displacement is at zero. So a is equal to a omega square sine omega t plus phi. Okay. So it is leading the velocity by phase angle pi by two and velocity is leading the displacement by the phase angle pi by two. Okay. And between displacement and the acceleration, the phase angle is pi. So velocity 
leading the displacement by phase angle pi by 2 acceleration is leading the velocity by phase angle pi by 2 okay and the phase lag or oh sorry phase angle between acceleration and the displacement that is between x and sorry a and x so this angle is pi radian okay so this is the phasor relation between velocity acceleration and the displacement now next is the frequency and time period in the simple harmonic motion so in simple harmonic motion the angular frequency omega its formula is square root k by m and the unit is radian per second if you want the frequency in hertz so frequency in hertz so this frequency we can represent as a f or it is the n which is the frequency in hertz so relation is angular frequency omega this is equal to 2 pi into n which is the frequency in hertz so n is equal to omega upon 2 pi so this formula it will give the frequency in hertz now next is the time period So time period is the inverse of the frequency. So it is 1 upon n. So n is omega upon 2 pi. So this is 1 upon omega upon 2 pi. And this is equal to 2 pi upon omega, which is the capital T. Okay. So if the angular frequency omega is given, and if you want to find out the time period, then you can use this relation 2 pi upon omega so this will give the time period unit is second and if i put the value of omega which is the square root k upon m then time period is equal to 2 pi in the square root m upon k so this is the direct formula for time period if the mass is given and the spring stiffness is given or the spring constant is given. Now, next point in the simple harmonic motion is the energy of the particle.
So let us take the spring mass system is oscillating about the two extreme points. Here x is equal to minus a and x is equal to plus a. Okay. So the total energy in this oscillation. So this energy, which is the capital E, is the combination of kinetic energy and the potential energy. Okay. And during the oscillation of a spring mass system or during the simple harmonic motion, this energy, it will remain constant. So we have the equation for velocity. This is equal to omega in the square root a square minus x square. Or second equation is a omega cos omega t plus phi. Okay. So from this, we can write the kinetic energy is equal to 1 by 2 mv square. So it is 1 by 2 m omega square in the bracket a square minus x square. And this m omega square. So we have the relation k is equal to m omega square. Okay. So we can write this equation as kinetic energy is equal to 1 by 2 k in the bracket a square minus x square okay or the second equation of kinetic energy this is equal to 1 by 2 a square omega square cos square omega t plus phi okay from this relation so this relation shows that kinetic energy of a particle in the simple harmonic motion is proportional to cos square function. So if I assume this total angle omega t plus phi as a theta, okay. So it is proportional to cos square theta. Now from this equation of kinetic energy, 1 by 2 k a square minus x square, the maximum kinetic energy we can observe when x is equal to 0. So maximum kinetic energy is 1 by 2 k a square. Okay. So at the mean point, we have the maximum kinetic energy. So at mean position where x is equal to 0, kinetic energy is maximum. And this maximum value is 1 by 2 k a square. Okay. Now potential energy, this value is equal to 1 by 2 k x square. Okay. So this is 1 by 2 k. What is x? So x is equal to a sine omega t plus phi. So we can write 1 by 2 k a square sine square omega t plus phi. Okay. So this equation shows that the potential energy is proportional to sine square theta. So if I take this angle as a theta, so the potential energy is proportional to sine square theta and kinetic energy is proportional to cos square theta. Okay. So remember these two equations. Now the maximum value of potential energy. So potential energy max value. So this max value is nothing but this value. 1 by 2 k a square. Okay. So maximum value is possible at the extreme position. So potential energy is maximum when x is equal to plus or minus a and this is at the extreme point so total energy which is the addition of kinetic energy and the potential energy so we can write the complete equation as 1 by 2 m omega square in the bracket a square minus x square 
plus potential energy so 1 by 2 k x square okay so this is the equation for total energy now from this formula of kinetic energy and potential energy we have the graph for variation of energy between the extreme points So this point is the mean position for a particle, x is equal to 0. This point is the plus a, extreme point, and this point is the minus a. So particle is oscillating between these two positions. So let us imagine the oscillation of spring mass system. So this is the mean position of the mass. This is the right extreme position. So it is a plus A. And this is the left extreme position, which is the minus A. OK. So particle is oscillating between these two points, plus A and the minus A. OK. So this is the energy variation when the mass is oscillating between the positive extreme position and the negative extreme position. At the mean point, when x is equal to 0, the kinetic potential energy of the particle is 0. Okay, Because potential energy, its formula is 1 by 2 k x square. Okay? So when x is equal to 0, potential energy, it will be 0. So this is the minimum value. Okay, And when x is equal to plus or minus a which is the extreme point we will get the maximum energy so potential energy is the maximum its value is 1 by 2 k a square okay so this is the maximum value and this maximum value is nothing but the total energy e so you can see at the extreme points we have the maximum energy Then kinetic energy, its formula is 1 by 2 m omega square in the bracket a square minus x square. So kinetic energy will be minimum when x is equal to plus or minus a. Kinetic energy, it will be 0. Okay, so you can see here, this is the kinetic energy. So this graph is for the kinetic energy. So kinetic energy is zero at the two extreme points. And when x is equal to zero, we will have the maximum kinetic energy. And this maximum value is equal to 1 by 2 m omega square a square. Okay. And this m omega square is nothing but k. So it is 1 by 2 k a square. OK. So this is the maximum kinetic energy, which is equal to the E. OK. So kinetic energy maximum, this is equal to the potential energy maximum. So what is maximum kinetic energy? So it is 1 by 2 m omega square a 
and maximum potential energy is equal to 1 by 2 k a square okay and this k this is equal to m omega square now here you can observe one point where both the energies are same okay so this energy this is equal to e by 2 and this point this is x is equal to a upon root 2 on both the side so at the position x is equal to a upon root 2 which is a plus or minus a upon root 2 kinetic energy this is equal to the potential energy and this energy this is equal to total energy divided by 2 so it is e by 2 now suppose if x is equal to plus or minus a upon 2 which is the midway between extreme point and the mean position so at this point the kinetic energy is equal to total energy divided by 4 and potential energy is equal to sorry kinetic energy is equal to 3 times the potential energy sorry this potential energy is equal to e by 4 and the kinetic energy is equal to 3 times the potential energy the next point is the simple pendulum so in this simple pendulum a bob having the mass m is suspended from a fixed support by using a string having the length l now if i displace this bob by giving the angular displacement theta and if i release the external force then this bob will oscillate about the mean point so here theta is equal to zero this is the mean point okay this is the right extreme point and this is the left extreme point okay so this bob will oscillate between these two extreme position then time period in the simple pendulum it will depend on the length of the pendulum so it is given by the relation t is equal to 2 pi in the square root l upon g okay so time is independent of the mass So it is independent of the mass of the bomb. Here the force that will act on the mass, this force is equal to minus mg into theta. This force is nothing but the acceleration, sorry, mass into acceleration as per Newton's second law. So this is equal to minus mg into theta. and acceleration is d square x upon dt square take this minus on the left side so plus mg into theta this is equal to 0 so from this d square x upon dt square 
प्लस जी थीटा इज इक्वल टू जीरो सॉरी टेक दिस थीटा सो हियर एक्स इज इक्वल टू एल थीटा सो डी स्क्वेर एक्स अपॉन डी टी स्क्वेर दिस विल बिकम डी स्क्वेर एल थीटा अपॉन डी टी स्क्वेर सो दिस इज एल डी स्क्वेर थीटा अपॉन डी टी स्क्वेर सो एल डी स्क्वेर थीटा अपॉन डी टी स्क्वेर प्लस जी थीटा इज इक्वल टू जीरो एंड फ्रॉम दिस डी स्क्वेर थीटा अपॉन डी टी स्क्वेर प्लस जी बाय एल इन टू थीटा इज इक्वल टू जीरो ओके सो दिस वैल्यू इज नथिंग बट दी फ्रिक्वेंसी स्क्वेयर सो ओमेगा स्क्वेयर इज इक्वल टू जी बाय एल एंड ओमेगा इज इक्वल टू स्क्वेर रूड जी अपॉन एल दिस इज द फ्रिक्वेंसी ऑफ सिंपल पेंडुलम एंड यूनिट इज रेड इन फॉर सेकेंड ओके एंड फ्रॉम दिस फ्रिक्वेंसी वी कैन डिटरमाइन दिस टाइम पीरियड T is equal to two pi under root l upon g. For seconds pendulum, the meaning of seconds pendulum is time period should be two second. So in the seconds pendulum, T is equal to two second. So if I put this value in this equation. so from this we will get length of seconds pendulum is equal to so this is equal to g upon pi square this is in meter so this is the length of the seconds pendulum okay so this is all about the conceptual part of the oscillation now we will start the objective type questions okay remember the first question so what is given here when a mass undergoes simple harmonic motion there is always a constant ratio between its a displacement and okay so when mass is oscillating with a simple harmonic motion that is the shm there is a constant ratio between displacement and option is period acceleration mass and velocity okay so for simple harmonic motion we have the equation for force which is equal to minus kx and f is equal to mass into acceleration which is equal to minus kx so we want the constant ratio between velocity uh, between displacement so x take the acceleration on the right side this is equal to minus m upon k so this value is constant minus m upon k so for simple harmonic motion there is a constant ratio between the displacement and the acceleration okay and this constant ratio this is equal to minus m upon k so correct answer is option b there is a constant ratio between displacement and acceleration so answer is option b now refer the second question a force constant of ideal spring is 200 newton per meter it is loaded with a mass of 200 upon pi square kg at the lower end the period of its vibration is so system given here it is the spring mass system
in this system the spring constant k its value is given which is a 200 newton per meter and mass is given this mass m is equal to 200 upon pi square unit is kg okay so we have to find out what is the period of vibration so question is to find out the capital t so for capital t we have the formula t is equal to 2 pi in the square root m upon k okay so this is equal to 2 pi in the square root m is equal to 200 upon pi square and k is equal to 200 so this is equal to 2 pi in the square root we can cancel out this value 200 so in the square root the remaining term is 1 upon pi square so it is 2 pi take the square root 1 divided by pi square will be pi so we can cancel out this pi so remaining value is 2 so time period is 2 seconds Okay, you can take this screenshot or you can note down this. So the correct option is option B. So the formula required for this problem is time period T is equal to 2 pi under root M upon K. Okay, refer the next problem. So what is given here? A particle executes the simple harmonic motion of time period 8 seconds and the amplitude is 4 cm. Find the speed of the particle 2 seconds after it passes through the main position. Okay. So let us imagine this mass is oscillating like this and this is the mean position where x is equal to 0. Okay. So we have to find out the speed of the particle 2 seconds after it passes through the mean position. So that means if the particle passes through the mean position like this, okay, after 2 seconds This is T is equal to 2 seconds. Okay. We have to find out what is the X. So, just note down what is given. Time period is given, which is 8 seconds. Next, the amplitude is given, which is A is equal to 4 centimeter. Okay. So, we have the equation for velocity. So, finally, we have to find out the speed. So we have the relation V is equal to A omega cos omega t. Okay, so actually it is omega t plus phi, but we can take phi, this is equal to 0. Okay, so formula becomes V is equal to A omega cos omega t. So we want to find out the velocity or the speed when t is equal to 2 seconds okay so just put the value a is given then omega value this is equal to 2 pi upon t so this is the relation between the time period and the omega which is the angular frequency okay so now put all the values in the equation of speed or the velocity so a is equal to 4 into omega is 2 pi upon t 
सो टू पाए अपॉन टी इज एट सेकेंड इन टू कॉस ओमेगा इज टू पाए अपॉन टी सो टू पाए अपॉन एट इन टू ना वॉट इज अ टी टी इज नथिंग बट द टाइम गिवन सो वी हाउ टू फाइंड आउट द फिलोसिटी वेन टाइम इज टू सेकेंड ओके नाउ जस्ट सिंप्लीफाई दिस इक्वेशन सो दिस टू दिस इज फोर एंड दिस इज टू सो कॉस फाइव बाई टू सो कॉस फाइव बाई टू इज नथिंग बट जीरो सो विलॉसिटी इज जीरो ओके सो वेन टाइम टी इज टू सेकेंड आफ्टर पासिंग द मेन पोजिशन पार्टिकल्स विलॉसिटी इज जीरो ओके सो करेक्ट ऑप्शन इज ऑप्शन ए सो वेन विलॉसिटी कैन बी जीरो वेन द पार्टिकल इज एट एक्सट्रीम पॉइंट ओके इट मीन्स दैट एट टी इज इक्वल टू टू सेकेंड इन दिस प्रॉब्लम पार्टिकल विल रीच टू द एक्सट्रीम पोजिशन okay so it can be positive extreme or the negative extreme position so formula required is v is equal to a omega cos omega t second formula is omega is equal to 2 pi upon capital t ओके नाउ रेफर द नेक्स्ट प्रॉब्लम ए पार्टिकल इज एक्सिक्यूटिंग द सिंपल हार्मोनिक मोशन विद द पीरियड ऑफ टू सेकंड सो टाइम पीरियड इज गिवन व्हिच इज अ टू सेकंड एंड द एम्पलीट्यूड इज टू मिलीमीटर सो ए इज इक्वल टू टू मिलीमीटर इट्स अ मैक्सिमम स्पीड इन मिलीमीटर पर सेकंड इज so we have to find out what is the vmax so we have the equation for velocity v is equal to one equation is omega in the square root a square minus x square okay and this is plus or minus omega in the square root a square minus sorry x square okay so velocity will be maximum when the position of the particle is zero so x is equal to zero v is equal to v max and this is equal to plus or minus a omega so v max is equal to a omega so omega is not given but time period is given so from this we can find out omega this is equal to 2 pi upon capital t so this is equal to 2 pi upon 2 so this is a pi radian per second okay and a is equal to 2 mm so 2 into pi so your answer is 2 pi millimeter per second so correct option is option b so the maximum speed or maximum velocity in millimeter per second is 2 pi millimeter per second so the formula required one is v is equal to plus or minus omega in the square root a square minus x square or you can directly remember this formula maximum velocity in the simple harmonic motion this is equal to plus or minus a into omega refer the next problem so maximum speed of the particle executing the shm 
is 1 meter per second and maximum acceleration is 1.57 meter per second square then the period of oscillation so maximum speed is given so v max value is given which is equal to 1 meter per second what else is given maximum acceleration is given so a max is given this is equal to 1.57 meter per second square from these two values we have to find out what is the time period so we have to find out the capital t now just recall the formula for v max so we have the v max is equal to plus or minus a into omega this is the maximum value of velocity maximum value of acceleration a max is equal to plus or minus a omega square so if i take the ratio of these two values so if i write v max upon a max this is equal to a omega upon a omega square so this is equal to 1 upon omega you can cancel out this capital a omega omega square so remaining value is omega put the value of v max which is a 1 and a max is equal to 1.57 okay from this we get omega is equal to 1.57 okay the question is we have to find out time period now use the relation between time period and omega so t is equal to 2 pi upon omega so 2 pi divided by omega is 1.57 okay now we need to simplify this so pi is 3.14 into 2 so 2 into 3.14 divided by 1.57 so 3.14 into 2, this is equal to 6.28 divided by 1.57, okay? Now this option is not directly given, 6.28 uh, divided by 1.57. So option given is 0 0.25, 4 second, 1.57 and 1 divided by 1.57, okay? So this option C and option D, these are the wrong options. So we have to select one option, either A or B. Okay. So even if I observe A is not possible because answer is 0.25. Okay. So just verify this answer, 4 seconds. So just multiply 1.57 by 4. So your answer will be 6.28. Okay. So your correct option is option B, which is a 4 second. So 6.28 is a four times of 1.57. So option is option B. So formula required is Vmax formula and the Amax formula. Okay, refer the next problem. Maximum velocity of a particle in a simple harmonic motion if period of simple harmonic motion is a t. So relation for maximum velocity is this is equal to a into omega and omega is again this is a 2 pi upon capital T. Okay. So just use capital A as a small a. So a into 2 pi divided by capital T. So this is equal to 2 pi A divided by capital T. So this is the V max. So correct option is option D.
Okay, take for the next problem. A particle of mass one kg is moving in a simple harmonic motion with an amplitude of 0.02 meter. So, what is given? Mass is given, which is equal to one kg. Then amplitude is given. This is equal to 0.02 meter, and the frequency is 60 hertz. So, small n is given. Which is a sixty hertz. The maximum force acting on the particle. So we have to find out what is the maximum force. So we have the relation for force. F is equal to mass into acceleration, and here acceleration is a maximum. So if the acceleration is maximum. Then the force will be maximum. So, what is the maximum acceleration? Its uh, equation is A is equal to. So, this is A omega square. This is the value of maximum acceleration. So, A max, this is equal to A omega square. This is a plus or minus. So, put this value in this equation M A max. So mass is equal to one kg into capital A. That is the amplitude is point not two meter into now omega is not directly given. The frequency in hertz is given, which is a sixty hertz. Okay. So this frequency we can convert in terms of omega. This is equal to two pi into n. So two pi. Into n is 60 hertz. So this is equal to 120 into pi. This is the value of omega. So put this value. So omega is 120 into pi square. So this is equal to 0.02 into. Now just simplify this 120 pi square. So I will write this 12 into 10 this is a 120 into pi so this is 0.02 into 12 square is 144 10 square is 100 into now pi square so you should remember this pi square we can approximately write as a 10 okay so here pi square is a 10 so this point not two we can write as a two into ten to the power minus two into one forty four hundred and ten. This is a one thousand. So this is a ten to the power three. And from this we can get one forty four into two. This is two eighty eight into ten to the power minus two and ten to the power three. So this is equal to ten to the power one. And from this, we get 2880 Newton. OK, so the correct option is option A. This is 2880 Newton. This is the maximum force. So the relation required to solve this problem is F is equal to mass into acceleration. Force maximum is when acceleration is maximum. So acceleration maximum relation is plus or minus a into omega square. Okay. And when we simplify this, we can approximate pi square is equal to 10. Okay, refer the next problem. So what is given? If a spring has a time period, capital T, and it is cut into n number of equal parts, then the time period of each part will be. So we have one spring.
like this okay and if i cut this spring into n number of parts and if i suspend this same mass m from each spring so on okay so what is the time period so i will assume this new time period as a t dash so initial time period is t and its stiffness is k which is a spring constant so t is equal to 2 pi in the square root m upon k so this is the initial time period when we break the single spring or when we cut the single spring into n number of equal parts the stiffness becomes k dash is equal to it is n times initial stiffness so remember this formula when spring is cut into n equal parts, new spring constant k dash is equal to n into k. So new time period t dash is equal to 2 pi in the square root m upon the new spring constant. So this is a k dash. This is equal to 2 pi in the square root m upon n k. Okay, so we can write this 2 pi upon square root n in the bracket m upon k. This is the t dash. Okay. Now this value 2 pi in the square root m upon k is nothing but the initial time period. So new time period t dash, this is equal to original time period capital T divided by square root n. So the correct option is option B. So if the spring has time period capital T and it is cut into n equal parts, then the new time period will be T upon square root n. refer the next problem the differential equation of a particle performing shm is given by d2x upon dt square plus 2x is equal to 0 where x is the displacement the frequency of oscillatory motion is okay so we should know the standard form uh, standard differential form for a simple harmonic motion standard form is d square x upon dt square so this is a linear simple harmonic motion plus omega square x equal to zero okay where omega is the frequency of oscillation and unit is rad per second now write the given equation so it is a d square x upon dt square plus 2 into x is equal to zero okay so if you compare this equation so value of omega square this is equal to 2 so from this omega is equal to square root 2 and unit is rad per second so question ask is we have to find out the frequency and that frequency is per second it means hertz so we have the relation for omega this is equal to 2 pi into frequency in hertz, which is the small. So from this small n is equal to omega upon 2 pi. So omega is equal to square root 2 divided by 2 pi. And 2 means square root 2 into square root 2. So we can write this 1 upon square root 2 into pi. OK. So this is the frequency per second and per second is nothing but hertz so correct option is option d so which is one upon square root two pi per second or this is called as a hertz okay so you should know this standard form of a differential 
differential form for the SHM. Then compare this with the given equation. Then use the relation for omega, which is a rad per second, and frequency in hertz, which is a small n. Okay, now next problem, a particle is executing the simple harmonic motion with the amplitude with amplitude A has the maximum velocity V0, its speed at displacement A by 2 will be. Okay, so what is given? A particle is performing the simple harmonic motion. The amplitude of the particle, this is equal to A. It has a maximum velocity. which is the V max, this is equal to V zero. Okay. So we have to find out it's a speed at displacement A by two. So speed at the displacement A by two. So we have the relation for V at any point, so velocity at any position x. So it is given by V is equal to omega in the square root a square minus x square. Okay. So here x is given, which is equal to a by 2. So omega value is not given, OK? But relation given is v max is a v naught. So maximum velocity, this is equal to v naught. And the relation for maximum velocity is this is the a omega. This is equal to v naught. So from this, omega is equal to v naught upon a. So this amplitude is given as a small a. Now put this value in this equation of velocity. So v is equal to omega is a v naught upon a in, in the square root a square minus x is a by 2. So simplify this equation. This is v naught upon small a in the square root. This is a square minus a square by 4. So this is equal to v naught upon a in the square root 4 a square minus a square. So this is 3 a square divided by 4. Now just take this square root. So this is v naught upon a square root 3 into a divided by 2. So we can cancel out this. So remaining value is square root 3 divided by 2 into v naught. So correct option is option A. OK, so if the particle is executing the SHM with the amplitude is small a and it's the maximum velocity is V naught, then it's a speed at displacement a by 2. OK, so to solve this problem, you should know this equation for a velocity at any position x. So this velocity is omega in the square root a square minus x square. Then second relation is for maximum velocity. So maximum velocity, it is equal to a into omega. Okay. So this velocity is again calculated from this basic equation. 
so when x is equal to 0 so we have already seen these conditions when x is equal to 0 we will have the maximum velocity so v is equal to v max and this v max is equal to plus or minus a omega okay and the speed is nothing but the positive value only so it is a into omega so put this condition from this we will get the relation for angular velocity omega which is a v naught upon a and then simplify this equation so this is your final answer okay refer the next problem the displacement of a particle performing the simple harmonic motion is 0 0.001 meter and the magnitude of its acceleration is 1 meter per second square the frequency of the particle is approximately okay so what is given displacement of the particle is given performing shm so x is equal to 0 0.001 one meter so we can write this in 10 to the power so this is 10 to the power minus 3 meter and acceleration is given so this is a is equal to acceleration is 1 meter per second square we have to find out what is the frequency so we have to find out frequency in hertz okay now we have the relation for acceleration so acceleration its a general equation is this is equal to omega square x so actually it is minus omega square x just consider the positive value so x is given acceleration is given which is a one meter per second square omega square into x value this is 10 to the power minus 3 so from this omega square is equal to so 1 divided by 10 to the power minus 3 so this is equal to 10 to the power 3 okay now just take this square root so omega square is equal to 10 to the power 3 means it is 10 square into 10 so square root of 10 square into 10 square root 10 square is 10 into square root 10 okay so this is the value of omega so omega is equal to 10 root 10 and unit is radian per second okay but option given they are in hertz so we have to convert this rad per second in terms of hertz so use the equation omega is equal to 2 pi into n okay so from this we can write n is equal to this is omega divided by 2 pi so omega is 10 in the square root 10 divided by 2 pi okay so we can cancel out this so this is for you into square root 10 divided by pi now here we want to simplify this because option is not given in terms of square root 10 okay so we have one approximation we have pi square is equal to 10 okay so we can put this value 10 as a pi square so for you in the square root pi square divided by pi so from this n is equal to square root pi square is nothing but pi so for you pi divided by pi so your answer is for you hertz okay so correct option is option c so the formula required is one is the basic formula for acceleration a is equal to omega square x okay a is given x is given from this find out omega second formula is omega and frequency in hertz so omega is equal to 2 pi into n from this write the equation for small n omega upon 2 pi 
and just simplify the equation. Okay. So here you can use the approximation pi square is equal to 10. Okay, refer the next problem. So here, this problem is based on the phasor relations. So phasor relation between displacement, velocity, and the acceleration. So what is given? The velocity and the acceleration of a particle executing the simple harmonic motion have a steady phase relation that is a constant phase relation the acceleration leads the velocity in a phase by so we have to find out the angle leading angle for acceleration with respect to the velocity whether it is a pi radian pi by 2 radian minus pi by 2 radian or minus pi radian okay so we have the equation for displacement, which is equal to a sine omega t. Forget about the phase angle phi. So basic equation will be x is equal to a sine omega t. If I use this relation, the waveform will start from 0. So this is the oscillation for displacement versus time. So x versus time. Okay. From this velocity is equal to a omega cos omega t. Okay. We can write this cos function in terms of sine function. This is equal to a omega sine omega t plus pi by 2. Okay. So here velocity is leading the displacement by pi by 2 radian. Okay. So pi by 2 radian this is the leading angle for velocity and acceleration equation is minus a omega square sine omega t okay so we have to find out what is the phasor relation between velocity and acceleration so we can write this acceleration as this is a omega square sine omega t plus pi okay so this sine omega t plus pi is nothing but minus sine omega t and now compare this omega t plus pi by 2 so just adjust this angle so omega square sine omega t plus pi by 2 so subtract pi by 2 so plus pi minus pi by 2 okay now this value is nothing but pi by 2 so let us take this complete angle as a theta so this angle is theta so we will get the relation for acceleration is equal to so a is equal to a omega square sine theta plus pi by 2 and velocity equation is a omega sine theta it means that the acceleration in simple harmonic motion is leading the velocity by the phase angle pi by 2 so this is the phasor relation velocity leads displacement by phase angle pi by 2 acceleration leads the velocity by phase angle pi by 2 okay and acceleration leads the displacement by phase angle pi so correct answer is option b acceleration leads the velocity by the phase angle pi by 2 so if you want you can note down this relation velocity acceleration and the displacement okay
okay refer this problem a particle of mass 0.5 kg performing the linear simple harmonic motion its a velocity varies with the time as shown in figure okay so here velocity time relation is given for a particle performing the simple harmonic motion okay from this relation or from this graph we have to find out the total energy of the particle okay so total energy of a particle so note down this direct formula for total energy this capital e is equal to this is 2 pi square a square m divided by capital t square so this is the relation for total energy of a particle in a simple harmonic motion okay so from this velocity time graph we have the maximum value of velocity so this is called as the amplitude of the velocity and this amplitude is nothing but the maximum value so v max is equal to 2 pi and unit can be meter per second so maximum velocity this is equal to 2 pi and what is the formula for maximum velocity maximum velocity is nothing but a omega so from this we have the equation for omega is equal to so 2 pi upon a and from this we will get capital t which is the time period is equal to 2 pi upon omega so this is equal to 2 pi divided by omega is 2 pi upon a okay so capital t is equal to the a so this is the time period okay now refer this formula for total energy this is 2 pi square a square mass is 0.5 kg which is given directly so this is 0.5 divided by the time period is nothing but capital a so t square is nothing but a square okay so just simplify this so this is equal to 2 pi square into 0.5 and from this this 0.5 is nothing but 1 by 2 so 2 pi square 1 by 2 so your final answer is pi square okay so energy of the particle is equal to pi square and unit will be joule so a correct option is option d okay so to solve the problem on the total energy you can remember this direct formula which is 2 pi square a square a is nothing but the amplitude into m which is the mass divided by capital t square okay second formula is the maximum velocity so maximum velocity is nothing but a into omega from this you will get the value for omega and then from omega you can determine the time period so t is equal to 2 pi upon omega okay okay next question is the graph of displacement and the total energy of a particle performing the simple harmonic motion okay so graph of displacement and the total energy so in the simple harmonic motion total energy which is nothing but the addition of potential energy and the kinetic energy okay this energy always remain constant so there is no loss of energy during the oscillation okay so if you plot the graph for displacement versus energy on the y axis it is a displacement or on the y axis it is a total energy and x axis is the displacement so this total energy should remain constant so you should get the graph straight line and the line is parallel to x axis 
so your correct answer is option c okay so this is the last question the oscillation of a body on a smooth horizontal surface is represented by the equation so this is the equation given x is equal to a cos omega t where x is the displacement omega is the frequency which one of the following graph shows correctly the variation of acceleration and the time okay so if the displacement equation is cos omega t it means that displacement graph will start from the positive value so this is the displacement versus time okay acceleration the phasor relation is acceleration leads displacement by the phase angle pi okay it means that if the displacement is on the positive extreme side then acceleration graph it will start from the negative extreme point so this is from minus a if this is on the plus a okay so this is called as a pi phase relation so just observe the graph which starts from the negative a so this is the graph which starts from the negative a side so correct option is option c so to solve the problem on this graph displacement velocity and the time you must know the phasor relation relation between displacement velocity uh, displacement acceleration and velocity acceleration okay so today we will stop here